for joining us today to learn a little bit about John Cabot. I'll go through this presentation quickly so that we leave, make sure we leave plenty of time for um, questions. So John Cabot is an actually a four year American accredited university. And what that means is we have um, our own degree seeking students earning bachelor's degrees with us um, at John Cabot, just like you are at Ryder. And then we also have our study abroad students. The enrollment is roughly when it's not pandemic time, um, roughly about 1500 students and half of the student body is that degree seeking group and the other half are study abroad students. All classes are taught in English and all students live in apartment style residences. And we have a um, little bit different immersion for each of the different apartments. And we'll talk about that as the session goes on. But again, as the four year degree seeking um, institution, we have lots of activities that are available for students to take part in athletics and clubs, student government, um, student newspaper that sort of that sort of thing is all happening on campus we also have a very robust health and wellness support system so that if students need additional services john cabot has those particular services and we are located in the eternal city in rome so this is a um, map of rome and you can see that the tiber river splits rome in half and up here in the top left hand side is where the Vatican is and a couple of pictures of the Vatican and if you cross over into what I like to call sort of center city this is where a number of um, iconic sites are like the Pantheon um, or Fountain Trevi Spanish steps are in this area there it's a little bit further north Oops, sorry I'm going to get lost in my slides here. Spanish steps are gonna be a little bit further north, but this is that's all in here. Piazza Navona, all of that is here. It will take you about 10 minutes to get over into this area, but you'll get lost. It's part of the adventure, it's part of the fun. Plenty of gelato and pizza to keep you happy when you're walking around. And then down here in the bottom right hand um, corner is the Colosseum. And from John Cabot, that takes about 20 minute, 20 minute walk. And here is John Cabot here on the same side of the river as the Vatican. And we are in one of the oldest neighborhoods. Rome is filled with um, a number of different neighborhoods with their own personality, their own characteristics. And Trastevere is one of the oldest neighborhoods. I felt like I was on a movie set when I was there. And it's about a 10 minute walk up to the Vatican. But these are some streets um, that you might be walking on, going back and forth to your apartment, to class. And this is the nearest piazza and it's St. Maria Trastevere. You may be having gelato or pizza on the steps at the, the fountain at some point. And this should look familiar to, was it Giovanni that had has been there? Yes? Yes, I yes. actually took, I took an art class where we actually went inside. That Isn't it beautiful? Oh my gosh. Stunning. Yes, Stunning. it is breathtaking. Yeah. Um, this is a view of Trastevere from one of our campus buildings, second floor terrace looking out over Trastevere. I tell students that I've been to 49 of the 50 states and I've never seen anything like Rome and Trastevere in the 49 states. South Dakota is the one I haven't been to and I'm not thinking I'm gonna see it there. Um, but we do offer classes for students to study with us in fall, spring, and summer. And it's a semester system, so it matches up with Ryder pretty well. In the summer, we've got the two five-week sessions. And then this year, we have put into place one three-week mini session. And the mini session and summer session two begin July 1. Got over 300 classes offered each semester. We are primarily a liberal arts institution. There should be no difficulty in finding classes that are gonna meet general education requirements, major requirements, minor requirements, that sort of thing. In the summertime, um, maximum number of classes you can take are two in a session. And in the mini session, it's probably just gonna be one class you would take in the mini session. 
classes are typically um, only Monday through Thursday. So you typically have Fridays off, which makes a nice long weekend for you to travel around Rome, Italy, or beyond in other places of Europe. The faculty is an incredible faculty. They are truly international, both perhaps where, what they're, where they are natives and then also where they have um, studied and gotten their education. So the faculty is a, a great faculty. Average class size is about 15 students. So again, the transition into the academic classroom should be pretty seamless with classes in English. Um, students from all over the world, even our study abroad students come from Boston to California and Michigan to Texas. So um, the answers that you may be hearing in the class discussion is, is pretty diverse for sure. We do have what we call three campuses. That's a little misleading for US terms because it really is three buildings. And one is Garini. This is a picture of the front door of the Garini building. The other is the Tiber building. And then right next door to the Tiber is the Critelli building. Apartment living, students always wanna know about their apartment. So I had said that we've got um, different options for you. We have four. Um, the independent apartments, I'm not gonna talk a lot about because we typically don't fill those unless we have filled all of the, the other three. But let me just say that independent apartments would be like being a commuting student. You are an apartment with other John Cabot students, but the rest of the people in that apartment building are likely to be Italian families. But all of the apartments come fully furnished. The kitchens are fully equipped. We provide the linens, the towels, all of that. They're in safe neighborhoods and there are resident assistants in all of the part, apartments as well. So this is Janiculo. It's about a five minute walk from the Garini building and it is three buildings, four stories. It will be primary, primarily American students. And in the fall semester, um, it is um, also substance free. And that's and we, because we have our freshmen in that, in that apartment complex. So these are um, a couple of different views of rooms in the Janiculo apartments. Full kitchen, you can see a full stove, um, hot pot, microwave, that sort of thing. The next is our Langara apartments. This looks jungly and, and lush. It's actually right across the street from our Garini building. And these apartment floor plans are all different. Most of them are actually two-story apartments. So you'll walk into a common room, but then go upstairs to um, the particular bedrooms. You can see a bathroom and again, another um, kitchen in Langara. This little piece that you're seeing right here on the corner, that is a washing machine. It is not a dishwasher. They don't have come with dishwashers, but all apartments do come with washing machines. They do not come with dryers. Um, Italians, Europeans typically don't have dryers. Electricity is too expensive. So this is Via Trastevere. This is our uh, largest apartment complex that we actually share with Italians. So this would be, um, other than the independent um, apartments, this is the greatest immersion into Italian culture. And this is about a 15 or 20 minute walk to the Critelli building, or you can get on a tram um, that's right there outside the apartment and be at the Critelli in 10 minutes. But you can see that um, the, all of these apartments have balconies. This is a, again, a kitchen. You can see the washing machine. The washing machine isn't always in the kitchen, but typically it, it might be. Um, and bedroom and our apartments will take um, from two to nine students in an apartment. So there might be, you might be in a triple or you might be in a quad or a double, just depends. And you can see the balcony in the background, common area, dining area um, in the other picture. So uh, some of our resources, people ask us about our classes and such. We have you know, the typical liberal arts majors, plus we also offer business and communication and we've got a full media production um, lab with um, digital media and TV production. We've got a dark room, we've got um, computer labs and student lounges. 
This is our studio facility where we, you can do fresco painting, drawing, photography, graphic design. Um, Jim always likes to talk about pinhole photography when he talks about the um, offerings in the studio art. That's because I have no idea what that is. I just think it sounds very <laughs> cool. I was told it's very unusual by people who actually knew what it was. I'm like, oh, okay, good. Um, in the Tiber building, we have actually a cafeteria. Now meal plans are optional. You are living in a fully um, equipped apartment. So you are, can cook your own meals, but we do have a full cafeteria and you can pick up a meal plan, but you can also stop in and grab a coffee and a sandwich and be on your way, however you choose to do that. And that is in the Tiber building. Oops. And in the Garini building, we have the Froling Library. It's considered one of the best English libraries in Rome. So you should not have any difficulty having access to materials for your classes. And my guess is you would also have access to the Ryder Library as well. Why is that doing that? And in the Janiculo residence, there is also a fitness center. This is open to all students, whether you live in Janiculo or not, you do need to have a physical prior to using the fitness center. Um, this is letting you know that we have been open from the start of the pandemic. So when it hit in the spring, we continued to hold classes. Students may have needed to go back home, but we developed the hybrid classes so students could um, study remotely as well as in person. And we have been operating this way since last spring semester. And just depending, I mean, we're all hoping that this will all clear up and things will be a little bit more open and free, but know that we are following all of the Italian laws and doing the quarantining that may be necessary. We're doing mandatory testing, wearing masks, sanitizing, social distancing, all, all of that. So we are um, paying attention to the safety of our students, our faculty, and our staff. And there are weekly updates as the Italian government has made changes. They've just opened up restaurants now during lunch. So things are easing up a little bit in Rome. And when I say that, we had a discussion yesterday and there was a woman from Florence and you know, Jim made the comment that the Italians all have followed the rules and regulations, unlike the Americans. So when they said wear a mask, they were wearing a mask. When they said to social distance, they were social distancing. When they said you can't come out of your house, um, they were not coming out of their house. They, they really took it all seriously. So anyway, we're here, we're ready when you are. You know, the best thing I think is to stay in, in touch with your home school to find out whether they're gonna continue sending students or when they're gonna open up and send students. Follow us on the different social media platforms. We definitely have a presence there. Make the best decision of your life, study abroad, study with us in Rome because we're, we're ready to have you for sure. And this is our, um, social media contacts, and then also Jim and my um, emails. So if you have any questions, you can certainly email us. And then our number, phone number in the Rome office, just remember there's a time difference there. Um, so anyway, that's my part of the presentation. Happy to answer any questions that you might have. I don't know if any came up in the chat, but ask away. One that did come up in the chat was about excursions and travel. And although we didn't cover that, I just mentioned in the chat that John Cabot has a very active student affairs office and we do have excursions, things where, where it's trips are usually one or two a semester, but there are a lot of like daily things. There are other kinds of activities. Um, I don't know if Giovanni was also involved in any of the cooking classes or wine tasting or those kind of things that if you wanna mention. Yeah. A lot of those kinds of opportunities um, but maybe you could just talk about where you traveled. My guess is you probably didn't stay on campus every every weekend. Where did you go? No, I, I did not. <laughs> um, I will say to the question that was in the chat first, um, JCU actually had a lot of excursions. 
specifically in the beginning of the semester when people were still unfamiliar with traveling on their own. Um, my friend Sam and I, we became friends because we were both coming from Ryder to go to JCU. Um, we went on one of the, we, first of all, we did a trip to Lake Bracciano, which is about 40 minutes north of Rome. Um, that was a JCU day trip that we did where we just went and we got to see the lake. Um, we learned how to sail. That was really amazing. Um, we went and visited a castle that day too, and it was really easy to sign up. Um, we just went on a bus with other JCU students. Um, and then we did other things like, like Jim mentioned, there was cooking classes. We went to um, Romeo and Juliet at the Shakespeare, um, the Globe Theater in Rome. That was a JCU event that we really enjoyed. Um, they had events throughout. And then we also did, um, you know, our own trips. I, I went to eight other countries. Um, when I was abroad, I was very blessed to get a scholarship from the English department. So please look for scholarships um, because I couldn't have done what I did if it wasn't for that. Um, I won't bore you with all, like, all of the, the countries that I went to, um, but there are some specifically in Rome, you'll see that there are these companies, specifically Bus to Alps and I don't know, but they target study abroad students for traveling. So they're, they'll put on trips every weekend and you can pay to go with them and have them be your tour guides for different things. So I would say there are certain trips that really would be great to book through them. Um, I did it for three trips, specifically Oktoberfest in Germany. I mean, I don't know if that's going to happen anytime soon. They canceled Oktoberfest last year for the first time ever I think um but that was good because Oktoberfest is booked out like months and months in advance so we booked with bus to Alps to go to Oktoberfest and that way we were able to go and not um have all the jacked up hotel prices in Munich for that those weekends mm. so that was a great decision another another um trip that we booked through bus to Alps was Morocco um and I knew I wanted to visit it, visit a country outside of Europe, but going outside of Europe is a little more difficult in terms of travel. So when we went to Morocco, we booked that through Bus to Alps because, um, you know, they did all, they set up all of the things that we did in Morocco. We did camel riding, we did hammam spas, we did ATV riding. Those are things that would have been hard to book um, on our own. So to do that through Bus to Alps, it was really worth the money. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of options and you'll see those bus out students. Well, they're not students. They're mostly study abroad students who graduated and then went back to work for the company. You'll see them out in the streets in Trastevere. They'll be like handing things out to you. Um, and otherwise it's honestly so easy to travel. There's a lot of options. Let me also ask you, Yvonne, it, tell me a little bit about your academic experience. I mean, going and, and doing the travel is good, but it's also part of the culture is to take the classes, meet with other students on campus and around town. Uh, talk a little bit about that if you wouldn't. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to sound like I was paid to say things, but I am. We being just like met. I'm just, I'm, I'm saying right <laughs> now, right? <laughs> no, I just want to, I'm, I'm only giving that because I genuinely feel that my education was the best part of my study abroad experience. It really was. And I will say that to this day because the classes that I took at JCU specifically for my communications major and my English minor um, were so incredibly applicable to the experiences that I was having even outside of class. So I took, specifically, I took one class called Intercultural Communications, where we did focus on the cultural differences between the U.S. and Italy. And there were times where I would learn about like a specific cultural aspect of Italy I always use this example and that's like staring culture in in Italy um Italians stare more than Americans like you will be walking down the street in Rome and an Italian man will just stare at you and you'll catch him staring at you and he'll keep staring at you right now as a woman in America I'm very paranoid about things like that and I feel like I gotta like you know grab my pepper spray or something but what I learned in my intercultural communication class is that that's a cultural difference. And I don't have to like fear for my life when I see a, like a strange man staring at me, you know? So like, that's a very specific example. 
But throughout my semester, I was learning about the culture that I was immersing myself in, as well as the cultures that I visited on the weekends. And I can't say enough that it was transformative in the way that I was able to learn about cultures other than my own. And I also just had a really great mix of classes. In addition to the intercultural communications class, I took an art history class. So I always say this to writer students, save your gen eds, save your gen eds, <laughs> because it's so much harder to find higher level classes that fit your requirements for writer. But I saved my art, my liberal arts core requirement for art. I saved to my junior year when I went to Rome. And that was the best decision because I got to take an art history class where every week we were visiting a new site in Rome. So we started off in ancient Rome. We started off at the Roman Forum. Literally the first week that I got there it was a three hour class on a Tuesday. Um, and every week we were visiting somewhere new. It was like a tour every week. And it was my class. <laughs> um, so that was incredible. And to the, um, I think Jan said something about the professors being international. They really were. Three of my professors were Americans. Um, one of them was an Italian with a thick accent that I actually struggled to understand sometimes. And that was a psych class. So that was especially hard. Um, and then one of my, one of my professors was a Brit. So they're from everywhere, <laughs> but talk truly about, my education talk was a little bit about, um, you lived in, in an apartment, but you were an independent. Mm -hmm. So in, in my world, when I sort of portray the different kinds of living arrangements, there's like Giannicolo where many of our freshmen are, it's mostly American. You get to Longaro or to Viala Trastevere. You're in sort of with other study abroad students, but there are Italians living in those apartments, so you can be a little more immersed. And you went to the furthest one for immersion, as far as I'm concerned, which is where you were probably there with a few other women living in an apartment complex with Italians all around you. And did you choose that arrangement, or were you placed there? And, and how was that experience? I did. So I actually, when I was picking out my housing for... Um, for JCU, I had heard from a girl from Ryder who went before me that independent part apartments were the cheapest option. She hadn't done it herself, but I was like, okay, I want the cheapest option. I kind of didn't really go into it knowing anything other than that, but I, yes, I chose it as my first preference. And again, greatest thing I could have done because you, like you're saying, it was very immersive. We were the only JCU students in our building. The, the rest of the building was locals. Um, and we felt like, it felt like I wasn't even living there for school. It felt like I was just living there, you know, <laughs> like, and I, I had, so I, there were seven of us total, um, in my apartment, there was three rooms, two doubles and a triple. Um, and there were a lot of us, three of my roommates were from Bentley university in Boston. And two of them were from the university of, um, San Diego. So the other so cool thing about that, you had you had a good. yeah. Exactly. You were our Boston to California group. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? It was crazy. Like there were a lot of differences between us, but it was really, it's cool because you get to meet other American students from everywhere. Like even on the weekends when you travel with companies like Bus Alps, like I was meeting American students from everywhere, like new people every single weekend. Like it was crazy. I've never met so many people in my life, but um, yeah, I loved my apartment. It was so, I got lucky in how close it was to my campuses actually. Um, but we did have our washer in the kitchen and we did not have a dryer. So it did get a little messy. All of us trying to dry our clothes in our living room <laughs> with there being seven of us, but it was really not that bad. And we had a beautiful apartment. It was stunning. It was very modern. It's so funny that you say that because of course, Jim <laughs> and I have been to Bentley many times to Ryder to San Diego. We know those students very well. And I can just imagine the three different cultures of the United yes, States, you know, <laughs> and, and I talk about that when I, when I discuss it with students, because it's not only the, the cultural immersion of the foreign country, but it's also the United States. I mean, you get, yeah. if you're in a classroom and someone asks a question and you have people from California, from Texas, from Pennsylvania, from New Jersey and, and Maine, you get very different answers. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's really important part of the education also. Yeah. I, I say, Absolutely. I mean, it was amazing in that way. And it was other questions it, from anybody. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Any quest? No, 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 please. Let, I want to answer any questions that anybody has. All right. She's a great resource. You ought to, you ought to ask. So right now, um, Ryder is accepting applications for summer and we have those 
three different sessions. There's two five-week sessions. You can take two classes per session. Uh, you can also go for the whole 11 weeks if you want. And then we have a uh, three-week mini session where you can take one class. And um, as Giovanna mentioned, there are classes that may be upper division that you can help go with your major. Depends on what your major is. You can look. Right now, they are out on our website, so you can take a look and see what we're offering. We have been open, as I mentioned in the chat, the whole time during the pandemic, and students are there currently going to class. So we, we have you know safety protocols in place and, and pandemic protocols, but, but things are going on. We plan to be open this summer and fall. What else can I tell you or Jan? And any more questions, either ask it right here on, online or send it to the chat if you'd like. Oh, so how do you apply? I think we're going to do a little bit of that right after this is over. Or, or Megan, are you going to talk about that now? Yeah, I can talk about that now. Um, okay. I'll share my screen. Let me, oh, okay. Do I need to stop? Yes. Yes, stop I will. Yeah. I have a lot of tabs open, so just please disregard all the tabs. <laughs> can everyone see my page? Yes. OK, great. So what you're going to do is go to rider.studioabroad.com. You'll go to this home page we'll go, and you're going to click semester or summer, it'll take you to the same page. So you'll click and you'll scroll down. And we have a lot of programs. Give me one second. Rider in Room. Click that. So this has a blurb about the program, some course offerings, and then you'll just go to the application process. This is all of the things that you need to do to apply. So you simply hit the apply now button. So when you hit that, it will prompt you to log in. So your login is going to be your rider key without at rider.edu. So just your last name, first initial, and then the uh, key password that you use. So you'll type that in. It will get you to another screen and that screen will have the information you need to complete the application. So you need to submit your most recent transcript. So your transcript from the fall semester, your two letters of recommendation from writer uh, faculty staff. You'll need to write a 500 word essay on why you wanna study abroad. And then what am I 